So as we look down along this tidal creek here at Ash Avenue, we see that it's full of um, serothidia, full of California horn snails. Um, and these guys are, are super important members of our salt marsh community. And through the work of a lot of great folks, um, uh, Kevin Lafferty's group, um, Armin Curis's group at UCSB, um, we know now that these guys are parasitized by a whole suite of, of parasites, but in particular these trematode parasites that both live inside these um, uh, snails, but also in, in other salt marsh organisms to complete their life cycle. Could be a crab, could be a fish, could be a bird. And uh, they usually have um, two actually other organisms beside the snail they need to complete their life cycle. So what, uh, through a lot of great work um, from those guys and a lot of their students and collaborators, we've actually learned that um, many of these, the, the vast majority of these larger adult snails are actually parasitized. Now these parasites, these trematode parasites, don't just kill the critters, in fact, they don't kill them at all, but they castrate them. So the trematode parasites invade their gonads and take over their gonads. So while the snail is still alive and doing its due and living for years and years, instead of producing um, uh, gametes, instead of producing eggs and sperm to make more snails, what they actually do is they produce more parasites. So the parasite has essentially co-opted this organism and turned it into a parasite manufacturing facility. Uh, we do have uh, one of the challenges, we do have a, a non-native uh, mud snail that's coming in and invading a lot, has invaded a lot of our uh, area of California and is, uh, doesn't host the same number or diversity of parasites. Um, but uh, that's, a, that's another story. Um, the point here is that we have all kinds of wonderful organisms in our salt marshes, both the stuff that's macroscopic, it's easy to see, but also a really cool array of more microscopic, harder to see life, both of which are really important to the functioning and dynamic health of these salt marsh systems. So as we look here, let's see if we can get on film. As we look here, we can see that there's um, many, uh, m many uh, smaller fish species in these areas, fungulus, and there's gobies and all kinds of stuff. And what we see here is we see some flashing. That's the sides, that, that's the fish essentially turning on their side and having the reflective scales catch the light. So I'm not positive as to who these are, but um, other work from um, uh, the parasitology group has found that um, uh, some parasites mess with the brain of these fish and actually induce them to behave more crazily. So they induce them to turn on their sides more and flash their sides, making them more vulnerable to bird predators. So things like herons and egrets that will come on in and eat these guys. And then the parasite can get into the bird and complete its life history. So this is a really cool example of a parasite controlling the behavior of one organism to make it more vulnerable to being eaten so that the parasite can uh, complete its life cycle uh, in the other organism. Pretty cool.